Um, I think we can get started now. We have a couple hundred people currently on the webinar, and I think we've reached a critical mass. Uh, my name is Brian Bolton. I'm SVP of Marketing at Bridgeline Digital. Uh, and I'd like to welcome all of you, uh, as well as our IF's Commerce Partner Guidance. Um, and excited to have you join us this afternoon as we focus on a topic that is particularly important as we uh, approach the critical holiday selling season, and that's driving conversions. Uh, I think it's a good time to consider what actions we can all be taking, uh, especially while there's still a little time to implement them. Uh, and the point of this webinar is to give you some expert advice on what tactics and strategies have worked for our customers and can hopefully work for all of you as well. Okay, uh, so that we can tailor the conversation a bit better to today's audience, uh, we have a quick poll question to ask, and that is what vertical does your business fall into? Matt is the Director of Global Channels at Bridgeline Digital and has more than 15 years in digital marketing, uh, spans roles from application development to digital campaign management and now agency relationship management. With industry experience at organizations like Actron and HubSpot, Matt or at Sully, yes, Matt is the early Twitter adopter who actually got the Twitter handle at Sully, which is probably worth a lot of money. Uh, Matt's well-versed in the strategies and tools for digital marketing success. Uh, CC Kelly is Creative Director at Guidance and has 14 years of agency experience that includes time with uh, JWT, McGarry Bowen, DraftCB, Sachi and Sachi, Ogilvy, and Razorfish. Uh, CC's award-winning work includes projects for some of the world's top brands, such as Adobe, Bloomberg, Citigroup, Garnier, GE, J&J, &J, and Kraft Foods. Uh, I think most interesting is that CC was a stand-up comic in a past life, so I'm expecting some really funny comments during her part of the presentation. Uh, one quick housekeeping note, uh, we're recording today's webinar, uh, so you can easily access it as an archive uh, and forward the recording along to colleagues. Also, as you may have noticed, if you try to shout out your industry vertical during a quick poll, uh, everyone's phone is on mute, so please, uh, just like for the poll question, use the GoToWebinar dashboard. Uh, to submit any questions you may have. We'll answer the submitted questions at the end of the presentation, or um, if something pops up during the presentation, maybe we'll, we'll interject and answer that one on the fly. Um, so quickly, uh, who's Bridgeline and, and how do we help build our customer success? Uh, well, we've been in the interactive business for over 10 years. Um, we've been ranked by, as one of the top interactive development firms in the United States, so I'd be to be helps us offer end-to-end -end solutions to our customers uh, tailored to specifically meet and exceed their different online objectives. Uh, and we've developed countless digital engagement projects including e-commerce solutions for well-known brands such as GE, Triumph Motorcycle, La Sportsac, and Taylor, Qualcomm, Pods, Monster Cable, and many more. Um, additionally, uh, Bridgeline and IAPS is the exclusive front-end e-commerce partner kind of flash solution for UPS's global warehouse and logistics business. Um, and Guidance is one of Bridgeline's premier e-commerce partners and is now in its 20th year of operation as a full-service web design and development agency. Um, Guidance is headquartered in the Los Angeles area uh, and maintains offshore teams in Argentina, Romania, Singapore, and India. Um, e-commerce sites that have been developed by Guidance, you can see a partial list of their customers on the slide. Uh, drive over three billion in annual online transactions, which is a pretty impressive accomplishment. Um, so, in today's webinar, we'll approach the topic of driving conversions from two distinct yet highly dependent areas, and that, that's visual direction, uh, which CC will, will take, and choosing um, the right set of tools. Um, our goal in this discussion is to give you actionable takeaways on increasing the shopping cart size, decreasing abandonment 
um, and increasing the total lifetime value of your customers. So uh, without any further ado, let's hand the reins over to Matt and CC. Uh, CC, it's all yours. Okay, great. Thank you very much, uh, Bridgeline, for hosting us today. This is CC Kelly, Creative Director at Guidance. And um, today we are talking about strategies that drive conversions. And you know, when we talk about driving conversions online, you know, most of the time I think we think about just getting people to click that add to cart button, you know, um, make the add to cart button bigger, put it everywhere, make it blink, make it pink, you know, get them to get your customer to put things into checkout. Um, and we think we, we've, we've made a conversion that that's the strategy. And actually, driving conversions is, I think, a little more complex than that, but at the same time, it's very simple. And that's what we're going to chat about today and how user experience and visual design strategies can actually help increase conversions and drive sales. And I think we're on to our next slide. Uh, actually, the next slide. Um, past this um, slide. You know the next one. Here we go. Very good. Alrighty. So everyone on this call today has you know, a different website to promote. You all have different types of products. Um, the target audience might be different. You know, the user behavior of that audience is going to be different. The, your customer goals, their mindset, their motivations. You know, these things are all different from website to website. But all of you have at least one thing in common. You want to drive sales. You want to increase conversions, and you want to increase the overall customer lifetime value. Now. Before we even start thinking about things like navigation, how do I make my navigation better to increase conversions, so the placement of buttons, and you know, making the drop-down menus work, and what's the best kind of drop-down menu you should have, and you know, what should go on the product detail page, and the right call to action, and product recommendations and reviews and the seamless checkout. That's all great stuff, but it's all important and necessary, and we're definitely going to touch on it. But even before we start thinking about that kind of stuff, the first thing we have to really do is put ourselves in the role of the customer who is shopping on our website. What does the customer really want? What does your customer really need? And what does your customer really need? Here's the thing. What does your customer really need to get invested enough to buy your product to make that conversion? Okay, now the, the, the simple answer is, we have to engage our customers, the, the title that you see on this slide, Create Engagement, Drive Conversions. It's honestly that simple, or it sounds simple at least, and I'm definitely going to give you some tips on how to do that, but I think the important thing to understand is engagement is the key to conversions, because once a customer is engaged with your website, you now have the opportunity to lead them on a logical path toward purchase, and that's where things like navigation and call to action and product detail pages and recommendations and all that good stuff comes into play. Then you have a chance to use those um, strategies uh, to lead them on that path, to get them to click add to cart, to create those conversions, but you have to create engagement. So of course that begs the question, okay, so you see how do we create engagement? It's the most important thing. Uh, there are a few things every website, regardless you know, of the, the products for sale or the audience or whatever, that, there's something that every website has to do certain things in order to create engagement and lead the customer on that logical path towards purchase. And I have um, actually a list of how many things? Six things that you might even want to write these down. And of course, in my infinite wisdom, I didn't create a screen for this slide for you to look at. That would be just too clever, right? So uh, you might want to write these down. And um, later on, if anyone wants to email me for it, I'll be happy to you know, share them with you. I think there, there are at least six things that you have to ask yourself about your website experience in order to create, to create engagement. First of all, does the experience, your website experience, offer a clear and compelling view of your brand and the products that you have for sale? Does your website experience offer a clear and compelling view of your brand? That's really like the first thing that your customer is going to latch on to when they arrive at your website. Number two. How effectively does this experience engage your curiosity and drive interaction? Is there anything there that you can get curious about that's going to get them to make that first click 
and you know, leading on that logical path towards conversion. Number three, how effectively does the experience deliver what customers expect from your company, from your organization, from your brand? Are, are you giving people what they came for? And another one, number four, does the site offer content and functionality that inform product selection and facilitate decision making? Does your site offer content and functionality that inform product selection and facilitate decision making? You know, if you, you know, I don't know how many websites I've gone to and it's just like a big picture of something and there's nothing to do. Believe it or not, there's nothing to do, there's no call to action and you know, some art director somewhere thought that was cool, but the customer is going to get confused and leave. And you look at the analytics for a website like that, and you've got 100% bounce rate, or it's 99.99% bounce rate, and the proof is in the pudding people. You have to give people something to do to facilitate your decision making. Um, number five, how effectively does the site support existing customer needs? And then also number six, how effectively does the site inspire repeat visits? I think it's important to understand about your shoppers that this may or may not be the first time coming to the website. This might be a repeat visit. You know, I'm wondering how many of you think about you know, how many visits does it, um, is it taking for your customers to actually complete that purchase? You know, is there a research phase to your product category before people actually commit? Um, and then even after someone purchases a product, what kind of support do they need from your organization, from your brand, from your product, from your products and services? And here's the thing, there's no right or wrong answer to these questions tends to be right along the slide that you're looking at, you're staring at now. Or as I like to say, the UX police aren't coming. There's no right or wrong answer. But the thing is, the questions are important for you to consider. It's the starting point for driving conversion. And in the following examples, we're going to switch to some browser screens in just a moment. Um, in the following examples, we're going to look at how the components of your website, the things, the tactics that are easier to latch onto, like navigation and your call to action and, and you know, your product imagery and your search functionality and content prioritization and you know, behavioral targeting. How does all that stuff work together to answer these questions and create that engagement? This is actually the thing that's um, working for you to, to drive conversion. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to some um, browser screens and my friends at Bridgeline are going to uh, make that happen here. And let's see if I can tell when it's happening. Just bear with us, people, as we're figuring this out. And this would be a good time for me to do my set. Oh, no, just in time. The browsers are up. No, they're coming. Hold on. And <laughs> we should play some hold music. Bear with us, people. It's, uh, I'm going to blame it on the solar flares. Solar flares are causing this. Here we go. Okie dokie. I believe uh, we can see the browser windows now. And I'm just going to use some examples to uh, you know, bring to life what it is that I was just um, talking about. Here we're looking at footlocker.com. This is a website that Guidance um, has um, a, a very long long-term relationship with. And uh, I want to walk through a number of things. There's a lot of things going on on this home page that I think uh, will provide you guys with valuable takeaways in terms of um, how you can you know, work to improve your own website experience. I'll ladder back up to the strategies that I was just talking about. So footlocker.com. One of the first things that you notice here, even before you're looking at navigation, obviously, is this carousel area. Um, the carousel is cycling through a number of interesting looking um, you know, marketing uh, ads, um, new products, you know, new and improved products as we're looking at here, and it's cycling through. And obviously the user can, can take control of this too. But what's interesting is that the photography is compelling. Um, there's a strong call to action in each image. It's just not an image floating in space. And um, so this is a very compelling area. And it's actually also the beginning of the, um, I would say, the content prioritization and hierarchy on the site. Um, as I'm scrolling down, oh, um, I'm scrolling down the site, and you can see that below the carousel, it starts to chunk up the content a little bit more. We have the area for bestsellers, um, new arrivals, 
we're starting to categorize the content in chunks that might be interesting to perhaps a first-time website visitor, to um, uh, someone who's doing research in these areas, or someone who's not quite sure what they want. They're in this browsing mode. And in this, and in this instance, um, just having the compelling photography um, with you know, a piece of copy or something could be enough. Because someone's in a, in a browsing mode, and you're going to send them to a, a category page if it's a specific product. So this is not the place to have your add to cart button and things like that. They're still in shopping, browsing, looking around. You need to help facilitate their decision making. And so, so far, what, the, what this home page is doing really well is that it's creating a, a, a product story, if you will, a narrative. You start with this very high level um, you know, product narrative above with the carousel. And then as the user makes their way down the page, bestsellers, new arrivals, we're categorizing all the you know, hundreds of things that are on the site into categories that someone can latch their mind around. And now we're starting to engage the consumer because we're speaking their language. We're giving them exactly what they came here with content and functionality and also the organization of the site. Another thing that's interesting that I really like on the Foot Locker site is over on the um, left, uh, right hand side rather, we have joined the conversation. You know, we're, we're including a social dynamic here. So, and this is also good. I mean, this is good for first-time visitors, but also for returning customers. And when we think about, you know, creating not only engagement but retention and loyalty, and creating that lifetime value um, for your customer, we're giving them ways to communicate, to you know, show their approval, to um, show their you know their commitment, their participation, their engagement with the brand. And so, as a first-time user, I come here and see this. This is very exciting to me. There are other people like me here, and I can actually learn from these type, types of social widgets in terms of what product I might want to be interested in. And then just looking down a little bit more, they have a blog, you know, they're showing um, videos and um, new markdowns, things that are on sale, et cetera, and using media in a really interesting way. So, so far, the first thing that, that's hitting me as a customer when I come to this site is the prioritization and the hierarchy of the Foot Locker product story. And I really believe that this is you know, one of the number one most important ways to start to create Top. You know, we have new arrivals, men, women, kids, um, etc. You know, kind of very high-level, broad ways to navigate all the products that Foot Locker has organized in a very logical way. This is one way to shop a website, and I think um, I always believe that uh, e-commerce retail websites should has a, a very, that very logical way to organize the product. Um, and this serves a lot of different types of users with different types of mindsets. So I, I just know that I want, you know, this woman's um, basketball shoe or whatever it is. They can go directly to it. These mega menus are great for that too. And also something I'm visiting more and more with the mega menus, and I think this also helps in terms of driving conversions because people can get to what they want very quickly is to even expand this even more and add visuals here. You might want to call out a couple of product, um, product areas individually so people can click to them even um, even faster. The other thing that this is doing, we have like all right, all the products across the top organized very logically. But within this carousel, the carousel gives us an opportunity to organize products in a different way that may um, keep another type of user's curiosity and drive their interaction um, more quickly as well. So here we have Green Glow, New Era NFL, End of Season Sale, Approved Socks, New Jordans. So we've kind of made um, kind of you know, niche sub subcategories, and we're promoting those in the carousel. And so this is an, an, another way entirely to navigate. And so all of the th these things, these strategies that Foot Locker has employed, um, I definitely recommend as ways to engage your customer, which as we said before, is the way to lead on that logical path towards purchase and um, help drive conversion. 
I'm going to switch over to another website right now, um, Servers Direct. Completely different example, obviously. We just we, we, we just went from, you know, Foot Locker, all these flashy things, flashing by and the shoes and runners and all these, um, you know, handsome athletes. And now we're looking at servers. Um, not that servers aren't attractive. Look, it, they're very interesting to a, to a lot of people. And, um, and I think, and actually I'm just looking at this product imagery here. I think, you know, if I was in the market for these servers, I would be very interested in um, being this product imagery, which is actually a great thing that's happening on this product detail on this website. Um, what I like here that's creating that engagement, one, is you are showing me an image, you are giving me some of the instant product details that I um, may already be familiar with or I may have come here looking for to learn more about. The page is very well organized, it's giving me all the information I want, it's giving me some product imagery to, let's see how this is working, um, product imagery to explore of the product. And what's also good is that it's tracking my behavior. Something else that I think is help, that helps to um, uh, create engagement and uh, increase the conversions is we can talk about recently viewed here, or this could be you might almost like. I'm not sure that's so appropriate for Service Direct. We'll have that in another example. But I think it helps create engagement because it gives the customer a sense of, okay, you guys know what's happening here, you're tracking this for me, and it just makes life so much easier. I mean, how many times have you been shopping you know, on a website and you're clicking next, 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 you're going from page to page to page, and then you think to yourself, gosh, you know, I really want that thing that I saw 25 clicks ago, where is it? And we're tracking it for you right here. So we're facilitating the decision-making process. And so this is a very good example here. I'm going to jump over to another example. Um, we have uh, a DNH. And here, once again, it's another industrial example. And, and even though this is just a wheel, we still have a product image. You can see you can zoom in. I think this, uh, this is kind of the rigor these days. You have to have the zooming feature, even if we're talking about a wheel. It's not a shoe, it's a wheel, but we still, people are still, your customer is still going to be interested in those details, and you have to give it to them. You even have the opportunity to choose view by video here. And more and more, um, the, the analytics and the statistics that I'm seeing is that selling with uh, the opportunity to watch videos is just more and more the case. You know, so you know, clients come to us and they ask us, so, oh, do we have to show videos? Do we have to make videos? Uh, are people really watching videos? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, videos more and more increasingly, increasingly are just the expected behavior. We have to design for the new behavior that people are expecting by virtue of their use of iPads and iPhones and um, other really interesting front end technologies. And even gaming is um, kind of changing uh, what we expect just regular e-commerce websites to do. And so this is definitely this technique is definitely something that you should consider um, for your for your website. I think I have um, just one more example here that I wanted to show you to kind of bring some of the strategies to life. We're looking at uh, going back to a fashion website, not industrial at all. Uh, very simple, very clean layout. Also, I think which helps reducing the clutter as much as possible is going to increase your conversions because especially when you get to a product detail page, you want to focus someone's attention. They've already gone through that whole browsing state, that shopping state that we were really exploring on footlocker.com on their homepage. And now someone has drilled down to the level where they're about to make a decision and we want to make that experience as clear and as intuitive as possible. So here we're looking at um, clothing. This is men's custom clothing. And they have to do a whole customization process in order to actually um, buy this shirt. And what I like about this product detail page is that it's just so amazingly simple. What it is, how much it costs, a little description, customize now, I'm done. And so if I click this, hopefully this will open up for us, um, it's going to bring you through this uh, very nice graphical customization process. And this is something else too in terms of user experience and visual design strategies that help um, increase conversions is definitely try to show more um, than what you're saying. People need to look at visuals and it has to be very intuitive. Like, I just know what to do here. I don't even have to, me if I can read about the medium collar and what that is and what that looks like and how, why it's flattering, but I can just scroll, I can just work through this whole customization process and just through, uh, by virtue of the visuals, they're so clear, um, I know which collar that I want, I can just continue that way. Um, so really just to recap, 
um, so I'm just sort of wrapping up now, is we're the various user experience and digital design strategies that we want to be cognizant of as we are working to create engagement, which is actually the mechanism that's driving your conversions. One is a clear hierarchy and prioritization of content that tells your product story, as we can see here as an example on Foot Locker. Uh, navigation, uh, various uh, modes, modes of entry to your product catalog with um, things organized very logically you know, in terms of you know, men's clothing, women's clothing, or whatever your product line might be, a very logical organization of that, of your product. Um, also married with um, a more contextual or lifestyle oriented or kind of niche category organization for someone who, for a returning visitor or something that's at least going to spark curiosity to drive those interactions. And the other thing is, the other part of the recap I want to um, point out is to have the right call to action in the right place. I think this is especially important. Um, here we have add to cart. Here we have, you know, here we had um, the customized call to action. And the idea is that you don't drive conversions by adding add to cart back to everywhere. It has many, many uh, spirited discussions with clients in, in my time uh, because they think to add to cart button is the thing that gets things in the cart when actually it's the storytelling mechanism. It's this product story that's driving the engagement, that's leading the customer on that logical path towards purchase, giving them what they want, when they want it, um, remembering where they've been, which you've already seen, or that you might like recommendations or other product descriptions and product recommendations by other customers. But by using the right call to action in the right place in the right time, um, so the customers are having that intuitive seamless experience with your website. And that is uh, pretty much the end of the uh, user experience visual design portion of our discussion. And I'd be happy to hand it back over to our, our friends at Bridgeline. OK, thanks, CC. So I'm going to make Matt uh, our presenter now. And, um, and he'll take it from here. Awesome. I uh, thank you very much, Brian. And I have to admit that I am now a little nervous. Uh, CC left me with some big shoes to fill after uh, her portion. Um, everything that CC talked about in terms of, of of the strategy and the storytelling is so importantly critical, uh, especially in the planning phases of uh, of e-commerce, whether you're replatforming uh, or just looking to get more effectiveness out of your campaigns and your website. I'm going to take more of a technical route and talk about what are the tools that you can use to improve those conversions, uh, make your storytelling easier, and, and, and really at the end of the day, because we're all digital marketers, is to understand what is working and what isn't. So I will uh, jump into uh, that. I mean, really, as digital marketers, is what we're trying to do these days is get in front of consumers the way that they prefer. Ideally, we want to be part of their 360-degree view of, uh, of the marketing and, and product world. Whether they prefer to interact with us via the desktop, uh, you know, traditional web browser, or they're going to like us and tweet at us in social, uh, perhaps they're, they use multiple screen consumption uh, on mobile or tablets. And then, of course, there's the, the, the one of my personal favorite drivers of engagement is email. Uh, in order to really successfully engage your customers these days, you need to be able to make sure that you can communicate on their preferred channel. Uh, whether it's mobile, social, desktop, or email, get in front of them at the right time, and you're much likely to get that re-engagement and more conversions into your funnel. Um, first part I want to talk about in terms of driving conversions and, and the tools that you need uh, is persuasive content. Uh, some people call it personalization. Uh, here at Bridgeline, we tend to use the term persuasive content. This is going to be uh, uh, simply presenting the right thing to the right person at the right time. Uh, I'm sure that many of us have always gone to a website, whether it's Netflix or or, or Amazon, or starting to type a search into Google, and it seems to know what we're thinking. It auto-completes for us. It shows us the right movie or the right product at just the right time. And we're really foolish if we actually think that it's a complete circumstance that had to be presented to us. Instead, it's the site knowing enough about us, what we're doing, what we're interested in, 
what other people like us are interested in, and changing the content presentation accordingly to get the most likely conversion out of us. So I have two screenshots here of a before and after. Uh, this is a BL lighting. This is a, a demo website we use here at Bridgeline. Uh, on the left-hand side, and, and I'll show this a, a little bit more uh, detailed in a, in a moment, uh, the image rotator of the carousel, as CC referred to it, is showing uh, pretty much generic content. It's uh, luxury yacht lighting, outdoor lighting, indoor lighting. But in the use case scenario that I'm going to take you through is that after I return to the site, so in a typical uh, uh, engagement, someone's going to find a website, find a product, do their research, and perhaps leave and, and go back to Google, go back to Bing, continue the research. But when that person comes back to my site, they've already given me enough intelligence about them and their interests that I should start tailoring that second experience immediately. So on the right-hand side, it's all going to be focused around indoor lighting. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just jump over. Uh, so here's a live version of the site. And as you can see, I'll let that carousel spin through a few times. Luxury yacht lighting. Uh, I believe the next one will be outdoor lighting, et cetera. Uh, also on this particular demo site, if I scroll down, there's three gray boxes, uh, calls to action, uh, that are going to be uh, very uh, very generic or, or very, very random, covering the breadth of offerings. But if I was to do a more traditional type of, uh, of, of, of shopping experience, instead of going straight to the site, and instead I, uh, I search for my LED lighting, I have our, uh, our sample Google, end up on that indoor lighting page, great. Uh, I mean, I mean we're going to look quick through into a uh, specific product. Now, as I mentioned, uh, and I, I definitely browse and shop online this way, is I'm going to continue my research phase. I'm going to go read product reviews. I'm going to go check Amazon. I'm going to go check eBay. But once I come back to the website, it knows what pages I've looked at, what they're categorized as, uh, how you tag that content accordingly or how you tag those products. So based off looking at one page, this example, these three gray boxes, which before were things around auto lighting and, and industrial lighting, is now completely focused on indoor lighting, pendant chandeliers and bath lighting. So for this site, the trigger was looking at one or more indoor lighting pages or, uh, uh, excuse me, one or more indoor lighting products. And you can have any number of triggers uh, to set to create that type of persuasive content. Uh, you know, part of the strategy phase that you that somebody should go through uh, early on, and, and as CC was talking about this, is understanding who your customers are and what they're looking for. So once you create those personas, start to identify what are the triggers that's going to be able to let you start bucketing those users accordingly. And once you have that, you can identify the triggers, put them in their bucket, and then use that to drive persuasive content. The right thing, the right person, at the right time. So you're going to be looking at things like behavior, technology, uh, uh, geography is incredibly important as well. You know, it, it, right here, I'm in Boston, the Northeast. It's 44 degrees in the morning. Uh, I go to an apparel company or an apparel website. It makes sense to start giving me uh, fall and and winter uh, clothing options for someone in uh, uh, you know where CC is out in LA or in the southeast where it's still essentially summer. Give them more of that 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 summer sale uh, expertise. Let's skip ahead. Uh, the next piece we want to touch on is making sure that your site delivers mobile. Um, uh, and I'd even hesitate to, to say mobile is, of a, is, is the sole thing that you need to worry about anymore. Instead, what you need to worry about is multi-screen consumption. Uh, whether it's your traditional uh, screen, which is your laptop or, or your desktop, uh, everyone knows mobile, smartphones, and then now there's just this wide uh, uh, breadth of screen sizes between your tablets, your mini tablets, your super phones. So just focusing on the mobile experience is you're actually going to start shortchanging your customers. And what's interesting is Q1 of this year is the first time that tablets started driving more conversions than, uh, than the traditional screen. 
And so if you think about it, I'm sure if I asked everyone to raise their hand, there'd be hundreds of hands going up of how many people are using tablets while watching television, seeing an advertisement, engaging with that brand, uh, continuing research that they were doing at the office or, or, or earlier in the day, and then conducting the transaction there. So the user experience is going to be so critical across all these different screens, and especially with the numbers like Bank of America predicts that in the uh, EMEA and U.S. market, that that mobile or smart device commerce is going to drive 67 billion in 2015. Um, I'd expect to see that uh, that that the Black Friday Thanksgiving weekend sees a 200 uh, million dollar. Uh, a number get hit for the first time. I believe it was around 161 million last year, uh, and they're, they're expecting a 30% jump between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Uh, and so the problem is, is the people that don't deliver the experience are going to start losing out on the customers. Uh, Google did a great study finding that 72% of consumers are no longer impressed with mobile experiences, but now that they expect it. Even further is that 61% of those users will return to a search uh, if they're met with a uh, mobile unfriendly experience, while 60, 66% said that they were more likely to engage with a website that has uh, uh, that mobile friendly and, and mobile ready type of uh, experience. Uh, even more than losing the conversions is the impact it can have on your brand. Uh, 55 percent of the respondents to this Google survey also said that having a frustrating mobile experience actually hurts their um, their brand perception. Uh, I sometimes use the joke that uh, you know my uh, my mother's AOL.com email address is so outdated, and I've seen so many small businesses that still use uh, their Comcast, their AOL, their Hotmail accounts for business purposes, and how that conveys to their brand perception. The same applies here. If you're not mobile ready, if you're not tablet ready, is you're giving the impression that you're not up to date, up to speed, and you're lagging behind your competitors. Uh, so the big solution is no longer just having a mobile and desktop experience, but having uh, the right experience for the right device. We see this uh, predominantly being solved by responsive design. Uh, the screenshots here are of uh, Triumph Motorcycle, their North American uh, e-commerce experience, shop.triumphmotorcycle.com. Uh, and it's the same site, and it's delivered across every, every browser on every device uh, with the best experience for that screen size. So responsive design is no longer about particular devices that you're targeting, but more about the screen size and the resolution of the user. So that way you're really targeting and focusing on the experience regardless of the technology behind the scenes. Uh, I know I'm the one, uh, and, and I'm sure that many are like this, that you roll over in the morning and the first thing you grab is your, is your iPhone or your Android or, or whatever your smart device is, and you'll start your day with that. Uh, also a good thing to notice is that the, the tasks and the purpose of, of smart device engagement with the website tends to be much more task oriented than the traditional browsing experience. Uh, uh, for retail locations, this could be finding the phone number, finding the hours, uh, finding the directions. Uh, with uh, uh, more of a, an online retail experience, it's going to be doing the quick research. They could be in your competitor's retail location looking at your site and comparing prices. So if you're less expensive, if you have the better experience, you can actually gain a conversion that you wouldn't have otherwise received. So make sure that you understand what your personas are, you're targeting to them correctly, and on these different screen sizes and these different experiences, you understand what the typical tasks and what the different um, uh, purposes of, of engagement are going to be. Uh, and it's going to be critical that you have some sort of content management or e-commerce platform that will allow you to uh, control, manipulate, and drive these different experiences easily. Uh, I've talked a little bit about uh, you know, giving the best experience regardless of what device they're on, giving different experiences based upon what you know about people. Then there's the aspect of how do you get people further along in the sales funnel, whether that's re-engagement and repurchase, or typically with things like cart abandonment, how do you pull them back? Uh, one of my favorite is still 
email marketing. Uh, some people call it lead nurturing, auto response campaigns, uh, marketing automation, but essentially it's all about sending uh, a very customized and, and targeted email to segments of your consumers, again, based on how you segment it to them. Uh, nurtured leads are going to generate 20% more uh, revenue than those who are non-nurtured. just makes sense. You touch them more often. You get similar products in front of their eyes. Uh, and 89% of marketers are still saying that, that email is the primary channel for lead generation. If you can capture someone's email address and contact information on their first visit, the likelihood of you getting them to engage and make that purchase is going to be so much higher. And furthermore, once they make that purchase, is you can bring them back over and over again, increasing the lifetime value of that customer and the cost of engagement. Uh, at BridgeLine, we tend to favor a lot of auto response messages. These are the types of messages that it's a, it's a series of emails that are triggered by some sort of event or some sort of action that your, that your uh, consumers are taking. It could be add to cart, filling out a form, requesting more information, and you set off that, that email that comes five minutes later, a day later, a week later, a month later, etc. So that way it's a, a just a, you, under, you understand the cycles, the visit cycles, and how to get those people back to the site. <coughs> uh, a great survey indicated that 21% of customers who abandon their cart are likely to re-engage re and buy. Now, there's two ways to really re-engage people. One is remarketing, content remarketing. Uh, I know that when I was doing ring shopping for uh, an engagement ring and I, I checked out sites like Blue Nile and doing my homework, I would then be off at different websites reading articles, and sure enough, there was an advertisement from, from Blue Nile. Again, it, was, it would be foolish of me to think that that was an absolute coincidence. No, it's using remarketing technology to understand what sites I had been at, what activities I had taken, and therefore it was worth Blue Nile to remarket to me through those channels. If you know who your customer is, if they've already engaged with you and you do have that email address, is these auto-response messages are, are equally, if not more so, effective because you can, you can make sure that it gets delivered to their inbox because you're not necessarily going to be able to make sure that they go to a website where you are remarketing. Uh, and a statistic that really wowed me is that 55% or, excuse me, abandoned, cart abandoners are spend 55% more on purchases than non-abandoners. But what this means is you have your very savvy online buyers who are going to a site, adding the cart, almost effectively making a wish list, and then continuing their shopping experience somewhere else, doing more research. But now when they come back, they, it's much easier for them to do that one quick buy. Their cart's ready to go. So they've taken the effort. They've gotten the ball to the one yard line, so to speak. And re-engaging through auto-response emails and remarketing is what you're going to do to get that ball into the, uh, into the end zone and get them to make that purchase. Uh, email marketing outside of the auto-response is the more traditional campaign or, or blasts that people will do. Make it as segmented as you're making your websites. Just simply blasting an email of generic content is, is uh, is no longer effective. It's the same thing in my mind as, as a direct mail piece. Instead, use the knowledge that you have, that the analytics of you, that you have about your users, about your consumers, to make sure that the email that they're getting is very targeted to them. Uh, so here's one email that I received, a, a, a service called Shopatuni. It understands the brands that I like, the sizes that I have, uh, and uh, and delivers that directly to my inbox. So it's you can't see the Excuse me, you can't see the uh, 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 subject line here, but it was Matt, eight, uh, it was, this one was actually like diesel jeans, eight diesel jeans in your size. That's going to get me to click through because if, if it's a hard to find item or if, those, if that item is on sale and it typically isn't, you're going to get more engagement out of me. Personalization in email is not just high Matt. Uh, it's really about getting that right content to me. And in order to make sure that this is effective, is you're going to have to have an analytics package between your e-commerce platform, making sure that you can segment and uh, and create lists for your email marketing service uh, uh, to get that that true tie-in and get the the most out of your analytics. Uh, and and that's going to drive uh, much more revenue as 
as relevant emails like this one about sizes and, and brands, uh, they drive 18 times more uh, revenue. And the personalization improves click-through by 14%, and that conversion also goes up by 10%. Uh, and those are great numbers uh, to follow down through the funnel. Uh, the next piece that's really huge and to make sure that, that you're able to support through your technology is social commerce. Social commerce can be explained in two ways. One is the, uh, uh, the sharing on uh, social networking, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, things like that, uh, of people liking your brand, liking the products. And so actually here's a, a, a close in. Uh, in this case, it's uh, a friend of mine likes Vineyard Vines, and because of that, Vineyard Vines is uh, posting, I'm getting the uh, the social proof of the brand being, in, in this case, cool or relevant to my social circle because one of my friends already likes it. And on top of that is they're providing me with a discount today only. Here's a code. Uh, the other big aspect that you need to make sure that your website supports is customer reviews, whether it's your five-star review or your uh, uh, full-on product review. Many people, you know, 74% of consumers these days are relying on social networks to guide their purchases. That's going to be, uh, you know, going to Twitter, going to Facebook, hey, does anybody like this? Has anyone bought this? Emailing their friends uh, and definitely reading customer reviews. Uh, making sure that you're getting out front in these channels and giving your customers the opportunity to give you the positive reviews and the shares and the likes that are going to drive engagement. And furthermore, I know that many uh, many organizations tend to be uh, scared of the negative aspects of this, but really, that's people who are passionate enough about the experience they had with you to share it. There's nothing worse than someone having a negative experience and not sharing it. Instead, they only share it via word of mouth. I know that uh, 20 years ago, any type of word of mouth would have been great, but word of mouth that you don't know about is now equally as damaging as uh, word of mouth that's uh, that's purely negative drive people to these channels, to these outlets, and then respond accordingly. If they're great, you know, thank everybody. If they're negative, try to resolve it. Uh, because really, by 2015, which is you know, barely a, over a year away, is web sales are going to be, 50% uh, of web sales are going to be driven more through social media than, than anything else. Uh, and that's everything that, that I wanted to touch on in terms of uh, the technology drivers. You know, touching on what CC said, it's all about delivering what your customer wants or needs, uh, identifying whether it's their first time visit or the repeat visit, and giving the right content to, to drive the conversion or drive the engagement. Understanding are they in a research phase, are they about to add to cart, are they making a repeat purchase, and, and getting the deals, the offers, the coupons, the related products in front of them whether it's through your website, uh, remarketing, or targeted emails. Uh, and content prioritization. You know, make sure that the right thing is from the right person at the right time. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Matt. It was a great job. Um, audience and uh, speakers, we, uh, we have just a, a few minutes now before uh, we get to um, the, the top of the hour. Uh, and there are a couple questions that I, I just wanted to um, have our speakers address. Uh, so the first one, I think, is a CC question, and it's just to talk to the importance of keeping everything above the fold. Sure, that's an excellent question. Um, and I'll, I'll start by saying there is no more fold. <laughs> the fold is, has gone away. I think uh, something I touched upon earlier was uh, that we have to, I think it's important, it's critical for us to recognize there's a whole new behavioral paradigm out there, you know, with the advent of all this amazing front-end technologies that we've been dealing with, that, we, that we've been playing with and having fun with um, on our iPads and smartphones and other devices. And people aren't afraid of heights. They're not afraid to scroll. And there's numbers to back this up. Um, they will scroll. And I think it's all, it's, also about, and the, and the way to make that work for you is to tell that right product story that Matt was also alluding to. It's about that content hierarchy and prioritization. So off that, you have to um, give your customer that view of your product line, of the experience, you know, establish that mental model so they know what they can expect from your brand and from the products and services that you offer. And then, they, and then you continue telling that story 
right down the page. I think, yes, it's important to get kind of like your big message across, you know, that does fit in that screen space without the customer having to do or touch anything, but they will scroll. And I, and I heartily say, don't be afraid of height. Tell a product story, and you will engage the customer and um, drive interactions. Great. Um, thanks, CC. Uh, one other question here um, around tools that you can use to customize your website to provide um, new experiences for returning users, um, and how so how it can be made different for for uh, those returning users from first time users. And I guess uh, Matt, that might be you or CC. I think you guys can fight for it. Uh, I'll I'll take first pass. Um, you know, I'd be remiss in my duties without mentioning that, of course, uh, that type of analytics and, and personalization uh, functionality is out of the box with BridgeLine's uh, iApps. Um, uh, beyond that, I know you can do a lot of great what, what people tend to call customer experience management, or CXM, uh, with tools like uh, Adobe puts out, Adobe CQ, uh, and, and, and Omniture. Uh, aside from that, you can do, uh, I know HubSpot has a, uh, a lead tracking, although that tends to be more B2B lead generation focused as opposed to e-commerce focused uh, around driving uh, new calls to action and, and new content based upon where somebody is in your sales funnel. Uh, A-B testing is also a great way to go. Uh, the Google Analytics uh, A-B experience uh, tool is also a great tool as well. Okay, and um, you know, let's just move on to one last question, uh, and that um, is the effect of site performance on conversion. Um, so, uh, CC, maybe you can you can answer that one. Sure. I wonder if there's any other context around that question. Site performance? Uh, do you mean load times? Um, I, I think we're talking speed. I think we're talking like speed. Yeah, yep. I think I think it's around that. Well, I think I mean just at a very you know very. I think um, kind of simple level. I mean, yes, I think it does have a lot to uh, with conversions. If your site is taking a long time to load, like more than a nanosecond, people are going to click away. They're going to become frustrated. I think once again, this speaks to kind of our new behavioral paradigm that we're dealing with. People expect things instantly, instant gratification, and so your your website, you know, performance needs to needs to be optimized. Um, so when they arrive, they're they're instantly greeted, you know, with your product service services and offerings, and not um, the spinning wheel of death or some little thing that's alluding to something's loading or something hasn't happened yet. Um, so so absolutely, that um, our sites need to be completely optimized for for that kind of behavior and those expectations. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, uh, here at Bridgeline, we partner with an organization called Dine Inc., which is really about uh, DNS services, which is uh, I tend to refer to as the plumbing of the internet, uh, but they have a great post on their site about the effect of uptime and performance, especially around holiday shopping. Uh, uh, I'm looking at the numbers right now. They were talking about uh, 2010, where there's a 212 million dollar uh, uh, spend over Thanksgiving weekend uh, in e-commerce, and they go into the performance of uh, or the performance metrics of site delivery, everything from that first connection to the final render, and how much it uh, how much it impacts. In, in fact, they reference one study that says that a single hour of downtime or non-performance can uh, cost upwards of hundred fifty thousand dollars on a uh, Black Friday or something like a uh, Cyber Monday. So that would be pretty impactful, I think, based on those numbers. Um, okay, guys, uh, we're right up against the uh, the top of the hour, and uh, that was a great uh, overall uh, webinar, great uh, great presentation by both our speakers. Uh, thank you for the questions that the audience submitted, and um, some of you asked about um, getting these slides afterwards. Uh, we'll be we'll be posting um, the slides on SlideShare. Uh, we'll make them available via, via our blog. I know uh, guidance plans to make them available as well near end. Um, and also the, the webinar has been recorded and, and uh, we'll send a recording of the webinar out to everybody as well. 
Uh, and additionally, we'll, we'll do a little better recap of uh, CC's uh, six points uh, that she had mentioned earlier. So uh, with that said, uh, I thank you everyone for your time um, and good luck in your efforts around driving more conversions. Thank you very much.